Colonel Mama Gaddafi, just 32 years old, the ruler of oil-rich Libya. Gaddafi came to power just four years ago when he deposed the aging King Idris. Today at Tripoli Airport, he welcomes his friend President Said Barre of Somalia. Both are fanatics, but Gaddafi's coup was bloodless. He has no taste for violence at home. He prefers to export the bloody libation of fanaticism. A street in Belfast, another bomb. Innocent victims, scarred for the rest of their lives. The money that paid for it probably came from Libya. Each year, the IRA collects a check for two million dollars from one of Gaddafi's money managers in Tripoli. Round the globe, dozens of scenes like this are being enacted for the benefit of Gaddafi's crusade. In this issue, Echo documents the man who has turned the gift of vast wealth to the benefit of evil. Tripoli, capital of Libya. Once it was a gay, bright city where tourists came to enjoy the sun, the sea and the night spots. But today, Tripoli has lost her smile beneath the dead cloak of Gaddafi's Puritan zeal. Women are back in Perda, adulterers are whipped, thieves have their hands amputated. Tripoli has lost a hundred years of progress during the last four. Gaddafi once said, the Arab nation needs someone to make it weep and not laugh. That he has set himself to do. His instrument is oil and the money it brings. Under the Libyan deserts there are oil reserves of three and a half thousand million tons. Already, Gaddafi's regime has $3,000 million in the bank, enough to give every one of Libya's people a better standard of life. But so far, Gaddafi has shown little interest in their needs. In Libya's oil, Gaddafi sees a vast reservoir of personal power, power he hopes one day to make him leader of the Arab world. Without oil, Libya would be a backwater. With it, Gaddafi can afford to dream of filling Nasser's empty shoes, to stand between Egypt's Sadat and Syria's Assad. Only 2% of Libya is cultivated, the rest is desert. Money could make half the desert productive. Gaddafi prefers to spend the money on other things. Instead, he gives his people soldiers, guns and tanks. Gaddafi's oil has fed a vision far beyond the needs of Libya's two million people. He shares Nasser's dream of a united Arab world, but united under the leadership of Mama Gaddafi. The first step he saw on that road was union with Libya's neighbor, Egypt. In return for promises of economic assistance, Anwar Sadat signed an agreement with Gaddafi to merge the two countries within one year. Under the agreement, Gaddafi would share as an equal the presidency of 37 million people. The Arab world was skeptical. Few could believe that the Egyptians would allow themselves to be ruled by a young hothead from the desert, or that Gaddafi would make good on his pledge of aid. We asked President Gaddafi about these criticisms. 
It is quite clear that those who spread such noises, such thoughts as this, are the enemies of our unity. And it is mainly imperialist countries who spread this sort of rumor against unity. That's why between brother Arab countries there is no weak and no strong, no wolves to eat the lamb. Perhaps not wolves, but certainly reluctant allies. Sadat was hesitant to embrace Gaddafiism. In July, Gaddafi girded thousands of Libyans to march on Egypt to pressure Sadat into cooperation. But Sadat had bigger fish to fry. As Gaddafi's hysterical campaign reached its height, Sadat and Syria's Assad were putting the final touches to their plans for war with Israel. Today, Gaddafi's plans have been firmly shelved along with his promised aid. Most Egyptians hope they'll stay there and gather dust. He may have failed for the moment, but is Gaddafi conducting a one-man campaign for leadership of the Arab world? This is the feeling of others. And they have a right to state their attitudes and express their feelings. As for myself, I do not feel this. I feel I am just one of the soldiers of this nation who has a duty to fulfill, and this is quite enough. But Gaddafi has a distorted idea of duty. This man, who must remain anonymous, is a former official of the notorious Black September terrorist group. He risked his life to tell the cameras how Black September got its funds. We get about 80, 85 million dollars in a year. And that is so, Libya gives 30, uh, Arabian Saudi gives 15, uh, the Qatar and Abu Dhabi and all the state in the Persian Gulf between 10 and 12, and uh, Egyptian not, Syrian also not, and for other uh, private source. And Algeria? Algeria, yes, uh, also five million. After the Munich affair, uh, Yasser Arafat get from Gaddafi as a price after the Munich affair, a five million dollar as extra price, not as aid uh, uh, every year, they get, as extra price, five million dollar. For Yasser Arafat's contribution to the 1972 Olympic Games, the cold-blooded slaughter of Israeli athletes, Gaddafi rewarded him with five million dollars. Last year, Terrorists, revolutionaries, and assassins in more than 15 countries received $180 million worth of Libyan oil money to do their grisly work, much of it against governments friendly to Libya. Gaddafi complains that he is misunderstood. To make himself understood, he is turning the Libyan people's oil into blood. <laughs> 